we want to, we're going to say something strong here. We're go, we are going to push this reset button today. It's our promise that you're going to get this because we know it so powerfully and you're willing to listen. And in the hours that we are together, you will find resonance with your point of power. But we want you to know that it only lasts a day because tomorrow you have to get on that high flying disc again. And the next day you want to get on that high flying disc again. So, and we want to say to you that you were born on it. You were born. How do I get on the high flying disc? Well, you were born there. I know, but that was a long time ago. <laughs> now, how do I get on it? Well, you have the potential of being on it every morning unless you remember something unpleasant from yesterday and that's in other words when you wake up what disc do you jump on oh yeah i gotta go to work yeah. <laughs> gonna be a lot of traffic today better hurry oh, it's gonna be hot again today <laughs> Or maybe you wake up into a household full of confusion and you just want to pull the pillow over your head and, and not get up. We want you before you go to bed or before you go to sleep to prepave your morning and say to yourself in the morning, I'm going to get up. I'm going to wake up on the high flying disc and I'm going to acknowledge that I'm there and I'm going to milk it as best I can. Now you might not make it till breakfast. You might not even make it till you get out of bed. <laughs> Esther has begun saying she's been doing this for about six weeks now. And after about day 20, it became really, really easy to do. And she began saying to herself, oh, I'm awake. Sort of a startling and profound announcement to herself. <laughs> I'm awake. For a while, she'd say, damn, I'm awake. <laughs> I'm awake. I'm awake. Am I, am I going to go back to sleep because sometimes she has the luxury of doing that or am I going to get up? Now, this was an important thing for her to acknowledge because if she's going to go back to sleep, she doesn't want any thoughts to get going except thoughts of slumber. But if she's going to get up, she wants to make sure that the thoughts that she's thinking are thoughts that will be valuable to her. She wants to make sure that they are high flying thoughts. And so usually she begins with some strong statement of appreciation of something that's very easy for her to appreciate. It doesn't take much. It only takes 17 seconds in order to begin your day. You've been saying for a long time, or maybe they've been saying for a long time before you got here, or maybe none of you have ever said this before in your life, <laughs> getting out of bed on the right side or getting off on the right foot. That's what this is. That's what we're really talking about. Establishing your vibrational point of attraction first because we want you to understand that if you choose it first it's so easy to get that positive momentum going but if you wait until you've without meaning to by default picked up and carried over some negative momentum then it's harder for you to shift from that negative momentum law of attraction is the perpetuator of momentum but you get to choose the direction of your momentum. And most of you are not doing that deliberately. You're just letting conditions that surround you that you might be observing be the reason for the momentum getting going. And then law of attraction just keeps it going until you hear someone like us say you create your own reality and you say that can't be true. If I really got to create my own reality, I would create a different reality, Abraham. And we say, you may very well want to create a different reality and you absolutely have the ability to do it because there is nothing that you cannot be or do or have you have the ability to get the momentum going you have the ability to keep the momentum going you have the ability to know when the momentum is in the direction that you don't want you have the ability to slow unwanted momentum you have the ability to speed wanted momentum you have the ability to do all of it you just got to understand how you do it and you have to understand momentum. We think you understand momentum, don't you? Have you ever sort of been a little ornery and made a comment and someone picked right up on it? Someone on the ornery disc with you. And then off you go. Now you're remembering things you haven't remembered in a long time. You're telling stories that you haven't told in a very long time. And this person is extracting stories from their past. Until, and now you've got a really good ornery meeting going. 
could really feel the momentum of it. And then what happens when some bright eyed, shiny person comes into the room and you've got that kind of momentum going, they either get sucked in with you, depending upon how stable they are in their own vibration, or they bounce right off of you, depending upon what they've got going. And that's what we are wanting you to do. We're wanting you to prepare yourself by getting on the high flying disc and staying there and practicing it more throughout the day. And then rec recognizing the power of the momentum that you have going, because this is certain where you stand and where you want to be is known by all that is. And when you take the time to wake up deliberately acknowledging the high flying disc and deliberately staying there and beating the drum of it and practicing it through the day, even if you fall off, you will, even if you fall off, get on again, even if you fall off tomorrow, get on, even if you fall off tomorrow, get on until eventually Esther said, Abraham, I refuse to accept. I refuse to accept that I have to wait until tomorrow to get back on the high flying disc. <laughs> You've given me too many tools. I like it on the high flying disc. I'm going to be on the high flying disc. I don't care what it takes to be on the high flying disc. Even if I have to feel good, I'm going to be on the high flying disc. <laughs> and after a while, it just becomes such a steady point of attraction that you begin to feel like the invincible creator of your own reality that you are because you are the creator of your own vibrational offering because you have guidance to let you know you have guidance to let you know. So there are two ways of knowing what disc you're on. First is how you feel. Next is what's manifesting around you. Those are the indicators. So this message is not about scolding you about being on anything other than the high flying disc. You get to be wherever you want to be. And sometimes being on those lower discs is really a clarifying experience. For a while, Esther was hard on herself when she knew she was not on the high flying disc. She would be really mad at herself for not having the self discipline to stay there. And we would say to her once she would come back into earshot of us, Esther, these are not negative moments. These are not bad moments. These are not wrong moments. These are clarifying moments and how wonderful it will be for all of you when you're consistently hanging out on that high flying disc. And then you have those little clarifying dips that just keep parlaying you into more and more and more clarity about who you are and what you want. Life is supposed to feel good to you and it's not supposed to feel good later. It's not about planning that vacation or looking forward to retirement or waiting for your dream mate or your dream home or your dream vacation. It's not about waiting for something good to happen. It's about being in a place that the good stuff can rendezvous with you right now. You see, and you have the ability to control your vibration so that good stuff is rendezvousing with you right now. And you're going to reach the place where you're even willing to say the stuff that you didn't think you wanted that rendezvoused with you was still good stuff because out of it comes clarity out of it comes expansion out of it comes more potential for more good feeling. You have control of the way you feel. Therefore, you have control of everything that comes to you. Therefore, you are the creator of your own reality. Before you leave this room today, we want you to feel as sure as we are about you, that you have the ability to get on it and to maintain it. Mostly we want to help you push the reset button. We want you to feel the power of your own point of attraction. We want you to feel the control that you have of your own point of attraction. And so want you to understand that it isn't the controlling of your thoughts that we are wanting to inspire within you today because that's really a hard thing there's so many thoughts what we want to inspire you to is an early and easy awakening to the high flying disc once you get some of that momentum going you're going to begin to notice the ramifications of momentum and those ramifications are what you want to call materialization you want to call it manifestation we like calling it actualization or demonstration so what happens when you get a really good momentum going is that the first thing that happens is you receive you experience the manifestation of emotion and we want to call emotion and manifestation because does it get any realer than feeling when you get that feeling isn't it real isn't it up close and personal kind of real that's a manifestation it's a manifestation of momentum so and you can tell by the way you feel whether it's momentum leading to something you want or leading to something you don't want the next thing that happens is 
Thoughts begin to flow. Those are the next, that's the next thing. Now, really what happened is the thought came first and the emotion came second. But we wanted to call the emotion the first awareness of manifestation. We think it will serve you. If you realize that when you are feeling an emotion, that it is a demonstration of the beginning of things materializing. Because the emotion has materialized. The next thing that happens is thoughts begin to flow into your mind. Thoughts. Thoughts. A stream of thoughts. You're likely to get a really good idea about something. And you'll know it's a really good idea because it feels good when it comes. Now, depending upon what disc you're on and what kind of momentum you're gathering will depend upon how good or how bad the thought feels. The next thing that happens when you're on this high-flying disc is that nature begins playing with you nature plays with you jerry and esther were in the seashore state park in virginia beach a few years ago and when they first walked in it was like the set of star wars hanging mosses and it was as if they were the only two people on the planet not a not a creature anywhere and as they walked a little longer and began breathing and reveling in the beauty of the place and relaxing into their own rhythm and pace, the creatures began making themselves known. All kinds of, all kinds of little critters were coming out of the bushes. And they got to the ranger's station and there was a picture with a caption under it that said, the elusive silver gray fox and esther said to the ranger are we going to see some of them and he said i've been here 13 years and i haven't seen one jerry and esther came around a corner the elusive silver gray fox was standing right in the intersection <laughs> looked at them they looked at him he looked at them they looked at him he looked at them they looked at him he said seen enough and off he went now they're standing on a wooden walkway a walkway that is above a sort of swamp and esther is standing with her feet sort of dangling over the edge and jerry said honey i don't i i want you to just listen to the sound of my voice and move very slowly and deliberately back one step and so Esther listened to the sound of his very calm voice and stepped back. And then he said, do it again. And she did. And he said, now look down. And there was a copperhead snake stretched out in the sun. And he laid there for a little while and said, you seen enough? <laughs> then off he went. So now Jerry and Esther are back at the ranger station. And, and Jerry said, did you know you have copperhead snakes? And the ranger said, no, we don't have any copperhead snakes. <laughs> and Jerry said, well, you do now. <laughs> Things that usually do not come out and play were coming out and playing because the vibrational resonance with that high flying disc was emanating and nature is the first responder beyond your own emotions and thoughts to demonstrate to you where your vibrational frequency is any nature ever playing with you hummingbirds doing ridiculous loop to loops in the gardens Birds flying, obviously, just for entertaining you. Creatures of all manner, cooperative components of the universe, saying to you, now that you're getting the hang of this, we would like to demonstrate with you the alignment that we feel in you. And then, of course, on your high-flying disc, other humans, also on the high-flying disc, appearing in crowds, standing out walking to you right timing saying the right thing at the right time 
giving you just a little piece of something that you were wondering about another little piece of something rendezvous all day long leading you to where you want to be